Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life, part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Have a look at that. Now based on the internal complexity in cell structure, there are two types of cell. Prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. So these are the two types of cells based on the internal organization of the cell. One category of cell, they have specific compartments, membrane bound cell organelles, whereas the other type of cell doesn't have it. So prokaryote, the word pro means something which is first formed or before. And carrion, the word carrion means nucleus. So carrion would mean nucleus. Pro means before or first formed, whatever you call it. So these are the cells where you do not have a true nucleus. So you do not have a specific membrane bound nucleus. That is what the name means. So what can you guess? What kind of cell is it going to be? The one with specific compartments or the one without compartments? Now since it doesn't have a membrane bound nucleus, that means it is the type of cell without cell compartmentalization. So prokaryote cells are those where membrane bound cell organelles are absent. So here all the cell components lie scattered within the cell. Whereas eukaryotic cell, the word eu means true. That means cell with a true nucleus. So here we have membrane bound organelles present. So the picture which I showed you in the previous slide where I numbered all the organelles that was basically the picture of which type of cell? Absolutely, that is the picture of an eukaryotic cell because you could specifically see each of the organelles whether it is a nucleus or a mitochondria or a ribosome. So everything was distinctly seen and everything was covered by a membrane or there was a boundary for each and every organelle. So prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. Now in this lesson we are going to spend a lot of time trying to understand the structure of eukaryotic cell and prokaryotic cell. So where do we see the prokaryotic cell? In which animals or the cells of which animals are prokaryotic in nature? It is generally seen in smaller organisms like bacteria and archibacteria. So in those cases, their cells are prokaryotic where you do not have specific organelles. Whereas eukaryotic cells are seen in all the higher kingdoms that is protista, fungi, plantae and animalia. You remember the Whittaker's five kingdom classification, right? There were five kingdoms into which all living organisms can be classified. Monera, protista, fungi, plantae and animalia. So out of those five kingdoms, the first kingdom that is Monera falls under prokaryotic type. Whereas all other kingdoms fall under eukaryotic. So these are the two types of cell. So now uh, we will talk about the structure of each of them. Now since the eukaryotic cell is going to be more complex because you have specific cell organelles. So we have to talk about each of the cell organelles, their structure, their function. So what we'll do is we'll talk about eukaryotic cells first. And once you know the entire structure of eukaryotic cell, prokaryotic cell will be very simple. So we'll deal with prokaryotic cell towards the end of the lesson. So here I have shown the pictures of some of the protista, fungi, plantae and animalia just to remind you in case you have forgotten what were they. So one important point to be noted here is compartmentalization is seen in eukaryotic cells and it is not seen in prokaryotic cell. So let us now quickly talk about eukaryotic and prokaryotic cell. So this is how a eukaryotic cell looks like. What is What are these two things? This is a eukaryotic animal cell and this is an eukaryotic plant cell. Now since plant cell and animal cells have quite a few differences like the cell wall present in plant cell but not in animal cell. So there are quite a few differences. So they have been shown separately. So if you look at these two cells you can see distinct organelles. So everything is bounded by a membrane. So this border or boundary is there. 
whereas if you look at this prokaryotic cell what do you see it is like it is just one area where you have all the things plugged in i mean all the things present here quite a dense area but other than that you do not see any organelles like these what you see here so all those organelles are missing here so this is how they look like now when we will go ahead and we'll talk about each and every component then we'll study the same structure in more detail okay so that was about the types of cell now the question is when we talk about cells what is the size of cell how big they are or how small are they now as i said when we talk about cells uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is how do they look like how big are they or how small are they what is their shape what is their size so when we talk about the size of cells they actually come in a variety of sizes as well as a variety of shapes when you talk about small cells they can be as small as the smallest bacteria like mycoplasma they are all very small around 0.2 to 0.3 micrometers in dimensions so they are that small again on the other hand when you talk about big sizes it can be as big as the egg of an ostrich you will be surprised to know that the egg of an ostrich is the largest isolated single cell so this egg so you can uh, imagine how big it is when you compare it with your palm so normally when you take an egg in your hand it is going to be very small but here you see it is almost covering your entire palm it is that big so and why is it so big it is so big due to the accumulation of the food deposits and nutrients which are needed for the growing embryo so this is the this is a very large cell so you just see the variation in size it can be as small as this it can be as big as this as well when you talk about the length there are certain cells which are quite long for example this marine algae it is acetabularia and generally the height or the length is almost around 5 cm so that is the length of these kind of algae again when you talk about the human nerve cell it is one of the longest cells lengthwise it is very long it almost is about 1 to 2 meters in length so just imagine how long it is so that's what i told when you talk about the size it can be very long it can be very big it can be very small as well so the sizes varies again you talk about uh, the red blood cells so the red blood cells present in our body they are also quite small and when you talk about their shapes they now oh, here on this slide itself if you look at the shapes of all the different cells what do you see are they all same in shape no some of them are cylindrical some of them are oval some of them are spherical some of them do not even have a proper shape it is all irregular so when we talk about shapes again the shape of the cells vary with their function they perform so some of the examples would be for example the cuboidal epithelium we spoke about this epithelium in our previous lesson so the cuboidal epithelium they have a specific shape and what is that shape cube like now they are present in the sweat glands so they are function as to provide protection to those glands and to also help in secretion so that is why they have this type of shape again when you talk about the ciliated columnar epithelium which are present in the respiratory tract so their job should be to help particles move down the respiratory tract and that is why they are with cilia so the shape of the cell cells changes depending upon their function you talk about the red blood cells or the white blood cells they have many different type of shapes some are elongated some are round some are concave so they have different type of shape talking about the nerve cells they are quite long and branched you can see these branch structures next is 
your uh, cartilage cells which are also called chondrocytes again if you look at their shape they also have a different shape compare it with the bone cells that is the osteocytes again they have a different shape again the mesophyll cells of the leaves when we spoke about the anatomy of dicot leaf we spoke about the middle layer mesophyll layer which contains chlorophyll so the mesophyll cells again they are also round or oval in shape Again, when you think of another plant cell, say tracheid, they are elongated cells. They are like a tube-like structure. So, when you talk about shapes, here on this slide itself, we talked about so many shapes. We talked about round shapes, biconcave shapes, amoeboid shapes, long branched shapes, cuboidal, round, again, ciliated, elongated. So you, we spoke about so many different type of shapes. So as I said, when you talk about the size and shape of cells, it is like there is a lot of diversity. They can come in any size, they can come in any shape. So the shape primarily depends also on the function which they perform. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.